There you are. Welcome back. Yes, that's an R in my chest, and that R can only mean one thing. Belts! 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 That's right. The R is for rep cord, and it means we're talking about one of Pooch's most favorite things, belt-style 3D printers. Next to me is the Infi 20 from Sane Smart. It's a belt-style 3D printer, and it was born of a live stream back in October 2021. And at the end of that live stream, we printed a very decent 3D Benchy. It's good. Like, this is good. Once the stream was over, the machine entered the review queue, and now that review queue has come up, it's been satisfied, and it's time for me to tell you what I think about this machine and what I think it means for belt printer enthusiasts such as Pooch and for makers all around the world. Specs on the machine are pretty, pretty decent. It's 200 on X, 180 on Y, and infinity! To infinity and beyond! on Z or Z. That 0.4 millimeter nozzle it's got on the end of the extruder will go to 240C, I believe, and the heater under the belt will take you to 100C. It's advertised as a Core XY motion system, but uh, 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 it is not Core XY. There is a dedicated motor for the X and a dedicated motor for the Y axes, which means no, it is not Core XY. <gasps> No! This is a textured nylon belt, and the filament does go through a runout detection system. Also, a few nice to haves. Uh, one of them is these markers on the Z, or, you know, the belt tensioning system. You can tell how much tension you're given on either side. There's also these guides on the side that act as belt hold downs, essentially. Those guides on the side keep the belt sides from lifting up like that and ensure smooth travel all the way. The control box is right up top, and I like this because it's not on the side. Anytime a control box is on the side, it makes the machine profile wider, and if you want a couple of these right next to each other, that just doesn't work. On the top, lets you access it and means a better placement for other machines if you have more than one on a table or a bench. Finally, micro SD is how you're gonna get some files to this machine if you're using media, but also on top is USB-C. I love to see it. Prints from the machine are actually not so bad. Uh, I did some single prints just to kind of get the hang of the machine. And in fact, there's this cube print that was done and I looked all over, I, I just can't find it. So you're just gonna have to trust me from the footage that you see. This is a print from the SD card and overall, I think it looks pretty good. There are a few things though we do need to talk about. The quality suffers where the support touches. That can be mitigated using different temperatures or different support spacing or even different materials. But for an example print using PLA material, it's not perfect. And I just wanna make sure I call that out. The other thing that I wanna point out is this layer shift on the print. And it's, it's in a very conspicuous space. So what happens is the print is traveling as the belt moves it. And at the end, when it's supposed to give away from the belt, sometimes it sticks just a little bit too much or for just a little bit longer than it should. That slightly lifts this end, which then causes that layer shift. And then eventually it does give way, things are back to normal, and the print continues. I saw this during my CR30 review, and honestly, this problem is there for any belt style 3D printer if the part is being held on longer than it should before ejection. That's just, that's, oops. I almost stabbed my printer. That's just uh, one of the things you have to look out for if you are using belt 3D printers. It's not really right for me to print a mini sword without giving it a stab test. Fatality. Of course, I had to try to print a dragon and I chose the crystal dragon from Cinderwing 3D. And initially, when I printed this, there was a horrific layer shift, just massive. And it looks like the reason behind that is the nozzle crashed into the print. And so the printer itself thought the nozzle was somewhere else and the print ended up just garbage. It was horrific. So what I did is I reprinted the dragon and instead of letting it just go again, I, I redid the nozzle height on the printer just to make sure we're all honky dory there. And it printed fine. And if you look at it, it's not so bad. Not so bad. Uh, the arm did fall off, but uh, it's the PLA failing. I don't think the printer failed in that, but look at that, an articulated dragon. Good job, Infi 20. These chain prints are actually some of my favorites. Uh, one of the things that you can see, though, on this one, nope, is it this one? I'm trying to, there it is. You can see 
that the chain prints are actually taking some of the belt with it when you pull it off. I was able to adjust the nozzle height again and print this white set of chains and you can tell it's not taking off as much of the bed. And so somewhere between chain A and chain B is the Goldilocks zone of nozzle height and I just didn't find it. There was an issue that the one of the chain models uh, showed off and it's this yellow one. You can tell as a vase mode print, it just looks like it's under extruded the whole way. The only thing that we can think of is that there was a partial clog that we weren't able to clear. And knowing that we were able to swap in a new nozzle in the bag that came with the machine was a new nozzle. So we put that in and it worked. So uh, that took care of that. But uh, just so you know, if your prints from this machine look like this, change your nozzle. What does 24 seven operation look like on this machine? It's a really good question. So to test this out, we chose the Fred the Frog model. It was from Zen on printables. And we set hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these things to print as copies in the slicer. And then the printing started. In fact, these Freds were really popular on my TikTok live channel. We actually filled a bigger Fred with smaller Freds, threw it up the air in the crash and these Freds just splayed themselves all over the driveway. They've been a lot of fun. You can actually see in some of the time lapses how these Freds were stacked on the build plate because as the Z belt moved, the Freds would fall off into a container. Uh, people really liked that on the live stream. It was really fun to do. So remember these Freds ran for 24 seven, all day, all night for many, many, many days. How many Freds were printed you ask? That many. That's not all unicorn farts and rainbows here. There are some things that Sane Smart should address on this belt 3D printer. Belts on belt 3D printers are consumables, just like build plates on regular 3D printers. They last a certain amount of time and then eventually you do have to replace them. And with the shadows and ghosts of previous prints on this belt, it really kind of lets me know that this is going to have to re be replaced pretty soon. And I, I don't know if that's optimal. I, there might be a better belt solution for belt style 3D printers. Sane Smart might want to look into a better belt solution. They say it's textured nylon. I don't know if that's best. In 24 seven operation, I did notice a squeaky bearing and that I believe has to do with how the bearings are connected in the bracket up above. I don't think these brackets are, are actually of good enough quality for these idler bearings. And I think Sane Smart needs a better bracket option to hold these to enable better 24 seven operation. X-Belt tensioning is done with a screw into a bracket holding this idler bearing. The problem is that screw is pretty long and eventually tensioning that belt is going to make that screw embed itself into the belt itself. That's not a good thing. Saint Smart shorten that screw or perhaps find a better way to tension the belt. Enabling many prints such as this, this massive amount of threads that we did required setting multiple copies in the slicer. And in doing that, it didn't do any sort of repeat code in the G code. It just took a G code for one thread, copied it and pasted it over and over and over again, which resulted in a G code file that was 1.1 gigabytes. That's way too large. There's no need for it. We should have Sane Smart implement some sort of repeat functionality within the machine so that you don't have bloated G code and you can have multiple models printed if, if that's your jam. Uh, but 1.1 gigs for a G code file, no. In the end, I think Sane Smart has themselves a fairly decent machine. The build quality is there. The structural integrity is there. It, it printed 24 seven for many, many days. That's all fine. There are a few things that could be improved about this 3D printer, but in the grand scheme of things, for the most part, those are going to be minor. I really think the Sane Smart Infi 20 for at the time of filming price tag of $749 US is worth it. I know Pooch loves belt 3D printers, and so I think I'm gonna donate this Infi 20 over to Repcord. Thanks. Listen, if you've made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, print all the things, and as always, high five.